with you guys for two years. And you guys are so stringent in where you check out your vendors and you test their products and you test their backgrounds. And, and I'm thankful that we finally passed and we've had a wonderful relationship with IPS just these last uh, six months. Um, so many customers you brought to us working together for not just touchless security, but um, still when COVID um, was still pretty hot before the vaccines were prevalent and selling our temperature readers. And it's just been an amazing partnership. And uh, I thank you for this opportunity to speak with uh, a few of your clients. So, uh, and uh, just to make sure, so you can uh, see my video and my audio, we're good, Taylor? Yep, I can see and hear you. Okay, great. Um, I'd like to let everyone know, um, uh, Taylor uh, slotted me uh, one hour to speak with you all. I don't know if we'll be on the call that long, but certainly if the information is relevant and you have unanswered questions, I certainly don't mind um, spending the next hour with you. Um, we're going to take this kind of slow. I'd like to make this kind of um, conversational. So I encourage you, if anyone's got questions or comments, um, please do raise your hand digitally or whatever the case may be. And, uh, and Taylor is going to balance the presentation material with your questions. So I do uh, um, you know, um, I encourage you, please do interrupt me. I certainly don't mind. Let's make this uh, interesting, relevant, and uh, let me kick this off. Okay, can you still see my screen? Yep, I can okay. see it. Wonderful. Yeah, so today's topic, of course, will be touchless security. And um, it's very important to note, and this is obvious to all of us on the call, I'm sure, that in addition to having touchless security, the technology needs to be secure and uh, preferably uh, integrated if you have other systems. Now, in some cases, it's, it's perfectly acceptable to have a standalone solution that's not integrated. Um, you know, especially if it's uh, serving a specific purpose, but even better if the solution can be integrated with your existing system. Um, I always in encourage, um, especially all our dealer partners, I'm sure you can relate to this, you always want to have some type of hook uh, that keeps you engaged with your end users. Um, sometimes that hook may be an ongoing contract, <laughs> um, you know, whether it's an alarm contract or some type of monitoring contract, but certainly with technology, um, whenever you offer anything, the more um, other systems it's tied into, uh, the greater account uh, control you can maintain. Um, one of the challenges we had during COVID, um, our, our temperature readers were very, very popular. But um, you know, now that thankfully we've got vaccines, the, the requirement for a temperature reader has subsided for now until, of course, uh, another pandemic arrives. I hope one doesn't. But um, a lot of folks were just using our devices as just plug-in devices that send off alarms whenever anyone, um, you know, is sensed having a high temperature. And once that uh, requirement is no longer needed, frankly, the devices, I believe, are either still being used or just put aside. And that's a shame because these devices can be integrated with access control systems, can be integrated with visitor management. So I always encourage everyone on the phone um, even when customers ask you to provide them a standalone solution, um, inquire with them what other systems they have. See if you could um, you know, connect it with those backend systems, because the more integration you have, the more account control, and um, you know, and literally more value added for that customer. So it's really a benefit to everyone. So let, let's kick this off. Um, with any product, really the most important thing to know is who is your partner that you're working with. Of course, you know, you know IPS, and I hope you'll also trust ZK Teco as a partner also, because we're not just a single device manufacturer. We are an access control company uh, in the business for 20 years. Um, I, I don't want to commercialize this. It's just important you understand the company behind the product. Um, so very briefly on this slide, um, we have traditional door access systems, um, and then we also have door access systems that the panel itself can uh, store and match fingerprints and soon faces and palm readers. And why that's important is because a lot of customers recognize the, uh, the need for enhanced security that biometrics provides. But granted, uh, most biometric readers also need you to run network cable to every door, and it can be a little time uh, consuming. Well, in ZK Teco's case, you can keep your, your existing wire that you were running RS-45 uh, to your card reader and replace that card reader with a ZK biometric reader. So you don't even need 
to rewire anything because ZK is a biometric company. Uh, in addition to that, we also are unique that we manufacture our own readers. Um, not only do we manufacture our own biometric readers, which can read uh, fingerprints, faces, palms, or any combination, uh, we also just released a new series, and Lindsay may not even, uh, Taylor may not even know this, but um, we now have HID uh, multi-class um, readers. So especially with the HID uh, global supply chain shortage, our readers can read HID formatted uh, readers uh, uh, cards, in addition to also reading Bluetooth and QR codes and our own biometrics. So um, please keep that in mind. We also have a variety of long range readers. We also manufacture turnstiles and walk through metal detectors. Uh, a few of the slides I think will interest you is we have the new Cronus um, turnstile, which is the only turnstile in the world that has integrated metal detection. So not only do we have a touchless entry solution with Kronos, but um, it also has integrated metal detection, so it can also be unattended, whereas the turnstile will not release uh, unless the person has authenticated themselves and um, is cleared of any metal. And then we also manufacture a variety of x-ray inspection scanners. So what's truly unique, all these products you see on the screen, ZK Teco is the original equipment manufacturer. And why that's significant, especially uh, in today's world of global supply chain shortages, um, we can promise, we can guarantee consistent availability, consistent pricing, consistent interoperability. So that's the power of working with a single vendor having control over the entire uh, product line. So I don't mean to pitch this as a commercial. This is important you understand when working with vendors so many vendors are reselling third-party components, or they're not even selling, uh, they're not even manufacturing products at all. Some of them are very good marketing companies. I just came back from ISC West, and um, it's amazing how so many of these companies, um, you think they make everything in the world, and it turns out they're just a marketing company reselling. So it's very important to know the company behind all the products. Uh, we also, uh, it's important to know that ZK Teco has a global footprint. Uh, we've been in business for 20 years. We have over 50 global offices. I manage our uh, operation in the U.S. We also have multiple manufacturing facilities. So if anyone on the call has any concerns with either NDAA compliance or even having products where China is the country of origin, we now manufacture in Thailand. So I assure you, um, you, know, you should never have any resistance to selling ZK Teco products. Um, here's a snapshot of my team in Alpharetta. We moved here about three years ago from our office in New Jersey, where we also have a 5,000 square foot user experience center. So all the products that we manufacture, you can see them working live in action in our Alpharetta facility. Um, also mark on your calendars, GSX, one of the world's largest security shows, uh, will be held in Atlanta later in September. I encourage you to visit the show, and if you can make some time, please do visit our office. It's about a half hour drive. And uh, also, we have uh, manufacturers reps um, that we work with in addition to our inside sales team. So um, we can assist IPS in the field remotely. Uh, I assure you have a large team um, supporting you. So um, with that said, before we jump into the products, uh, does anyone have any questions about our, uh, our company or some of the uh, products I, I put on that splash screen? I don't see anything in the chat. Okay, so let's so let's let's jump into the technology and and you know I, I apologize because so many things that we review are kind of uh, common sense, but not necessarily do people actually apply that. So um, some of this will be new to you, some of this will be common sense. Um, so please be patient as we review this. So you know why the need for touchless technology? Uh, and again, this is not a shocker, but uh, of course people are trying to refrain from touch surfaces especially now coming out of COVID, um, you know, kind of, if we did what our, our moms told us what to do when we were kids, you know, cough into your elbow, stop touching your face, uh, and that kind of thing, I, I'm sure the, uh, the, uh, the spread of, the, of COVID wouldn't be as severe, but unfortunately, it's hard to avoid. So some of these touch surfaces in access control, um, you know, many times you might have a keypad reader, um, or you're touching a fingerprint sensor, or even if you're handling your prox card and it's possible that you know perhaps germs landed on your prox card and you picked up your prox card and and uh, and so on. So th these are touch surfaces that we're now trying to avoid with touchless technology. 
And that's why we're seeing um, a growing increase in the, uh, in the, in the prevalence of face recognition readers, and now even touchless palm recognition readers. Uh, now, I'm sure if I ask any of you on the phone, you know, or, or the call, you know, uh, does anyone have a demand for palm recognition? No one will raise their hand because no one ever thought about it. But you might not be aware that Amazon now, with their Amazon Go grocery stores, um, they're trying to eliminate, um, you know, the need for cashiers, which reduces cost and also error making. So if you ever walk into an Amazon Go store that, that purchase all the Whole Foods stores, um, you will first uh, approach a gate that has a palm recognition reader on it. And then when you authenticate to the palm reader, it pulls up your Amazon account. The turnstile opens. You proceed shopping. And there are cameras all over the store that keep track of what you're buying. Whatever you put in your cart gets added to your shopping cart uh, digitally as well as physically. And then upon leaving the store, again, you authenticate with your palm. That will check you out. And then your, your Amazon account is uh, charged accordingly. So I uh, just want to assure you, palm recognition is absolutely valid. It's, it's more accurate than face recognition. It's touchless. And the beauty behind it is none of your clients know about it. So most likely none of your competitors know about it. So I encourage you all, when you're going out in the field talking to your customers about touchless technology, introduce them to palm recognition. It's incorporated into our face recognition reader. And we could also do online um, uh, demonstrations for you and them if you like. So palm recognition is very, uh, very, very powerful. Um, I, as I pause for the moment, is anyone on the call, have any of you actually seen palm recognition technology utilized? I personally haven't. <laughs> okay, yeah. You know, and I'm going to go into the slides in a little bit more detail. Uh, but certainly palm recognition has advantages over face recognition, uh, especially because there is pushback in certain um, cities throughout the U.S. and the world where uh, they've got privacy concerns. And you might not be aware, but even Facebook was forced to delete over one billion faces from their membership. One billion. So, um, you know, some people do have concerns with face recognition. So palm recognition is a phenomenal alternative. So uh, please keep that in mind. Now, is anyone on the call, have you had experience with face recognition um, used for access control? Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that as a, as a no, and we can certainly address that. Um, but uh, as far as biometrics are concerned, right now more than any time, um, Customers now are reevaluating their security. Um, you know, as you know, there, there are wars in the world where cyber attacks are becoming more prevalent. And a lot of customers are migrating from weakened based access control protocols to OSDP. And during this time of migration, that's when customers are open to change. That's when customers are open to looking at new technology. So now more than ever, I would encourage you to proactively ask your customers, what are you doing about security? Are you considering any migrations to OSDP? And I'm going to go into that in a little more detail. Have you considered biometric technology? Now is the time to proactively go after them. So many of us are busy just responding to clients, responding to installations, and that's all good and hope everyone is doing well with their business, but you also want to be proactive now because uh, during these time periods, you want to take advantage of it. Once things settle down in the next year or two, uh, we'll be back to just status quo and um, you know, customers perhaps being reluctant to implementing new systems. So why implement face recognition? Well, the obvious one, of course, is it's hygienic because it's entirely touchless. You're not touching any surfaces. Face recognition also improves security. That's because you can imagine whenever you have anything in your possession, whether it's a physical key, metal key, or a prox card, or even a PIN code you have memorized, those items can be stolen or misused. Uh, often when we still go to ATMs, if for anyone who still takes cash out, um, you know, there's stories about people online looking over your shoulder, looking to see what your PIN code is. Um, also, now there, there are little covers where they try to cover your fingers, so it's harder to see what you're keying in. But anytime you've got a key or a card, 
um, you're, you're inviting problems simply because it can be stolen or misused. And of course, with face recognition, it's much faster and convenient. Um, it, it takes less than a second to match a face, and you don't have to go through your pocket or your pocketbook looking for your keys or looking for your card, or perhaps if you're in a stressful situation where you urgently need to get into a room, um, you may not remember your, your pin code. So, um, you know, the, our apartments recently, where I live, we recently changed our pin codes. Two weeks later, I'm still looking at the photo that has my pin code in it because I still haven't memorized my seven digit number. So certainly if a biometric would, uh, uh, would alleviate that. And uh, if anyone has any privacy concerns, they should not because biometric technology does not store and match actual face images. They're actually storing only a template, which is a tiny, tiny, tiny bio, uh, uh, digital representation of uh, a few facial features. So it's not that we're storing your face and sharing your face with the world. These are biometric templates where only the reader that generated the template can actually see it. So even if you hacked a biometric reader and you opened it up, you're not going to see faces on it. So there really are no privacy concerns with facial biometrics. Now, I also touched upon palm recognition. Uh, palm recognition actually has enhancements beyond face recognition. Uh, for starters, obviously, you're always going to improve security when you can add another credential. So um, in, our, in our case with the uh, ZK Tecla speed face readers, we can uh, store and match faces in addition to palms. So you can actually have two-factor authentication, whereby the door won't open unless the reader sees both your face and your palm. The palm readers are also very, very fast and very, very convenient. Uh, in earlier generations, you had to have your palm held in a specific position, and if that position was not exact, it might not work. Well, our palm readers, and I encourage you to visit our YouTube channel, um, they're very lenient. You can have your palm on an angle up to 60 degrees, um, so it's very, very comfortable. It's very, very convenient to use. And, of course, palm recognition eliminates any privacy concerns. As mentioned before, some governments are prohibiting the use of face recognition devices. Um, I don't agree with it because it's really not based on any valid concerns, but if customers do have privacy concerns with face recognition, but still value the benefit of biometrics, a palm recognition reader is, an uh, is a perfect alternative. Um, it also became popular because uh, once COVID became prevalent, uh, the use of face masks was mandated most everywhere. And uh, still today, even among uh, these times when we have vaccines, there still are many retailers, restaurants. Um, you still see on airplanes it's mandated or food processing plants where employees have to wear face masks. Well, if you're wearing a face mask, um, the technology still can recognize your face, but a palm reader is uh, certainly more reliable if a person's face will be covered. Um, and with any biometric uh, technology, you want to make sure you have anti-spoofing, and certainly with ZK Techo's uh, face and palm readers, we do. It's very, very difficult to spoof with a fake face or palm. Um, and the palm recognition, the reason why it's even more accurate than face recognition is because palm recognition technology, it looks beneath the skin surface and can actually view um, your blood vessels or, or, the, or your palm vein pattern. So highly, highly accurate because it's infrared technology. And as mentioned before, we have a very flexible palm angle tolerance. So your palm does not even have to be positioned exactly in the same position. It can be slightly off or angled. So palm recognition, very powerful, very affordable. And it's a great opportunity for you all on the phone to you know, uh, introduce this to your, uh, to your customers, to your managers, um, you know, anyone in your department. Um, Certainly now is the time to look at this technology because, uh, you know, we're, we're seeing more often, we often deal with engineers, um, end user engineers who love this technology, but they've got difficulty convincing their manager to implement it. And uh, now is the time, I assure you, uh, to speak to your managers. What are you doing about security? What are you doing about concerns for weakened protocol being hacked? Um, what are you doing about HID prox readers being hacked? That's another driver because, HID, the, uh, their patent expired on their HID Prox technology, um, and that's why uh, you now have $10 hacking devices on the internet. 
So now is the time to speak to your managers and customers and so on. So here's a video just of what uh, this palm recognition looks like. Notice the hand is actually uh, two feet from the device, so it's entirely touchless. And the reader is scanning not only the palm print, but also the uh, blood vessels beneath the uh, skin surface. And that's why you never have to worry about your palm being dirty or have scratches and so on. The whole process takes less than a second. I mentioned before, it's got a very high angle tolerance. Basically, you're just pausing, holding your palm above the reader for just a moment. Less than a second, you'll recognize where you are. And if it's next to the floor, you'll release. And the module inside that reader, we call a PBM10, which can go into door controllers, computers, check-in. So, you know, whatever, whatever devices you have in your office, it could be a door, it could be an elevator, it could be, if you have a warehouse, it could be a forklift truck. If you're running in retail or grocery store, it could be a, a compact baler. Any electrical device that works on 12 volts, but you want to control it, you can simply use a biometric to ensure only authorized personnel are um, actually um, um, starting up that device. So we, we talked about you know, the convenience of all these uh, palm reader and the face reader. Let's have a look at now the security aspects of uh, what you have versus who you are. So on the left, what you have or know, that's what most everyone on the call, I'm sure, is mostly familiar with. You're familiar with um, either PIN codes that you need to memorize, um, or um, you're using your phone now as a Bluetooth device. So Bluetooth is becoming a very popular way of opening up doors and identifying yourself, though there are drawbacks to it you may not know. Um, of course, also there are prox cards and there's key fobs. So that's what you have or what you know versus who you are. Who you are will be your face or your palm or your finger, or it could be your voice. Um, you know, those are your biometric credentials that you always have on your person. You never can forget or lose these uh, biometric credentials. So let's compare the two. So what you have or what you know, consider the replacement cost of every time you have, uh, you know, you have a user who loses their, their card, or even uh, when they change their phone. If, um, I mean, let, let, allow me to pause for a moment. Is anyone on the call using Bluetooth for door access? We, this is Taylor. We here at IPS just recently um, started using Bluetooth for some of our internal and external doors. I know on the call here, we've got other IPS personnel from various branches, as well as our end user customers. Um, so is anyone else experiencing Bluetooth right now? Yes, we are here in Lexington. Ron Miranda. And Ron's with IPS too. Great. Yeah. And Jeff, what, what, um, can you share me? What, what are some of the benefits you've seen using the Bluetooth? Uh, beyond using the cards? It's one less um, thing to carry. You know, okay. in today's world, uh, it, you, everyone, it's reality. Your cell phone is glued to your face pretty, <laughs> pretty much. Exactly. Um, so you're, ne you're never without your phone. Um, yep. Whereas with yep. the other type of traditional credentials, you have to make sure you have that Crocs card in your wallet. You have to make sure the set of keys you carried that day, if you drove your husband's car and your your fob is on your key, car keys, you're in trouble. Whereas your phone, you're you're more than likely always going to have that with you. Yeah, that, 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 that's exactly right. You know, it's interesting too, because um, you know, we also sell Prox cards. And then every now and then customers will tell me that the card doesn't work anymore. And, you know, they think the battery ran out on it or, or something like that. But, um, you know, the cards have a very fragile antenna that's inside them. Not sure if anyone knows how the proxy cards work. And so, you know, the cards are subject to wear and tear. If you put them in your back pocket, they can bend. The antenna can snap. Um, you know, but, you know, people, they, they treat their phones better than their kids <laughs> sometimes. So um, we're seeing Bluetooth certainly is becoming more and more popular. But there are also some downsides of Bluetooth, which I'll touch upon in this slide as well. So, um, um so let, let's continue. So if you have a card, um, you also have, have to consider the cost of replacing that card. But with a biometric, of course, there is no ongoing replacement cost. 
Um, you always have your face or, or, or your palm, of course. And uh, with any credentials, you can lose it, you can steal it, or you can it could be misused. It, uh, if someone intentionally or unintentionally uh, allows someone else to, to gain possession of it, right? But uh, with biometrics, you can't share your face, you can't share your palm. Uh, you know, these things are obvious to everyone. And of course, um, if uh, you need to gain access with something you have or what you know, um, if you do perhaps forget to bring it with you, um, you could have an accidental lockout. I'm sure we've all experienced that with metal keys or even perhaps prox cards where um, you get locked out of, a, of your office or your home even. And with biometrics, there's no accent on lockouts because you can't forget your biometric. Now, something to bear in mind is the Bluetooth is a very, very um, um, secure and convenient means to access a door. And it, um, you know, it eliminates all those problems associated with cards and key fobs. But keep in mind, though, it does require power. And there are times when your phone may not have power. Uh, certainly having your Bluetooth um, signal on at all times also drains uh, the phone. So um, that is something to think about. And of course, with Bluetooth, you know, the signal needs to be turned on and it needs to be available. Whereas, you know, these things are, are not of a concern with biometrics, but biometrics is always available. So I would um, certainly um, argue that Bluetooth is a better solution than carrying prox cards and key fobs, certainly less expensive to manage certainly far less replacement cost. However, sometimes um, employees may have pushback. Why do they need to use a personal item to gain access to their uh, you know, in place of employment? So there could be pushback. That's why I would argue that uh, biometrics probably is a, a better solution than Bluetooth. Um, something I also want to touch upon, um, I mentioned before, um, many customers now are looking at the uh, security flaw of the Wigan protocol. And I don't want to dive too deep into the technology other than just, um, you know, just quickly describing what it is. Um, for the last 40 years, uh, there was only one communication protocol that card access systems use with access control panels, and that is the Wiegand protocol. And uh, of course, I'd say 99% of all customers, this is the communication protocol used from card readers to access control panels. But as of uh, the last probably two years, um, there's now a new protocol called OSDP, Open Supervised Device Protocol. And this protocol now addresses all the inherent security flaws of the Wigan protocol. Um, with OSDP, um, it's supervised. You've got um, longer distances between the cards and the panels you can install. It's more reliable, more secure, less expensive, um, and also has many features that um, uh, are, are needed in today's um, uh, times. So first and foremost, Wigan protocol is not supervised. And that means you could actually have somebody hacking that line between the card reader and the panel, and you wouldn't even know it. Whereby with OSDP, the O stands for open supervised device protocol. So it's constantly being monitored. Therefore, um, you'll know in real time that someone is actually hacking that line. Also, Wigan protocol, the data is not encrypted. So when it's hacked, um, you know, a hacker can see that data that's going from the card reader to the panel, um, duplicate that and create their own credential and gain access um, to that door, perhaps. Whereas with OSDP, you've got AES-128 encryption. So the data is encrypted. Um, Wigan protocol also has a, a range, a limitation of 500 feet. We often say you shouldn't go beyond 300 feet. But with OSDP, you can actually do cable runs of up to 4,000 feet. So that's actually going to you know, save you money on, uh, on repeaters. And Wigan protocol, it's also one direction communication only. The card reader communicates to the panel, and then that's it. Then the panel, of course, will open up the door if you've got access rights. Whereas with OSDP, you're not bi-directional communication. And this is very helpful because uh, today's readers, many of them now do have displays. So now the panel can communicate back to the reader uh, pertinent information regarding the communication, um, regarding uh, maybe usage, or even uh, employee communication. All right, so um, most, um, you know, most everyone should be mindful of OSDP. Please do consider it. It's uh, been adopted by, uh, uh, the, uh, by SIA. I just came back from ISC West, North America's largest security show. And uh, certainly, if uh, you want any more information, um, ourselves and IPS can uh, help educate you more so 
on the fastest, least expensive way to migrate to OSDP um, uh, access control. So um, going back to now touchless security. So we, these are pretty much our go-to readers that IPS has had a lot of success with. Um, our readers are available with both uh, mask and temperature sensors, um, as well as without. Um, admittedly so, probably the last six to eight months, we've seen a sharp de um, decline in need for temperature readers. But you never know that if they're going to come back, I'd say keep them because uh, for just a little bit more money, now you're, you're prepared should there be another um, instance where uh, temperature detection um, is reinstituted. Uh, I'd also like to mention that you know in the US, we're very, very fortunate. We haven't been exposed to a lot of uh, pandemics, but uh, more so overseas in Asia and Africa with bird flu and SARS. And um, if you ever travel overseas, temperature checks is the number one way um, to at least quarantine anyone who might be contagious. If you fly to overseas airports, you will see people walking around with hand scanners. And um, to some degree, hand scanners still persist here in the U.S., even though vaccines are readily available. So temperature detection did not come and go. It, it exists throughout the world. And um, I would still strongly recommend buying readers that have them. You don't have to turn it on. Whenever you have any of these readers, there's a variety of parameters you can set uh, to restrict door access. Um, you can restrict door access based on your PIN code, on, on, on an RFID credential, Bluetooth, where, uh, whether the face is recognized, whether your palm is recognized. Uh, we've got QR codes. And yes, you can also add temperature detection and mass detection as a parameter um, under which, which controls the door. So um, I would recommend still continue um, installing them. We certainly keep them in stock here in the US. I always have at least a couple hundred of them because they still, um, they still are being sold. So just taking a deeper dive into the technology, um, getting back to face and palm recognition, all our devices are, are, are powered by this module that you see here. Um, this is our Armature branded face and palm recognition module. And this allows the devices to store and match up to 50,000 faces and 5,000 palms. Um, most of our competitors in the, in the world of face recognition, they're pretty much just software companies. Uh, many of them will charge you on a monthly basis to have access to their software. Many of it is cloud-based, so your credentials are maintained in the cloud. Uh, we'd like to think that these uh, vendors are being responsible and not sharing your information, but, but who knows? Well, the power behind the ZK Techo product line and these armature modules is that these are standalone devices. The data does not go outside your network. And these devices are not beholden upon third-party cameras. They don't need third-party software, and they don't need a third-party server. So anytime you see any videos on the internet about how wonderful people's uh, face matching is, there's a lot going on behind the scenes making that possible that you don't know until it's time to make a purchase. Um, I've also seen access control companies using readers that seemingly just waving your hand gains you door access. Well, the wave of the hand is simply just waking up the reader. The reader is then communicating with a Bluetooth credential that's on your phone in your back pocket, which you had to pay for. So there's really no magic other than ZK Techo's palm recognition devices. And the only three companies in the world making palm recognition devices are one, ZK, two, Amazon, and three, Fujitsu, another very well-respected um, electronics manufacturer. So don't be fooled by these videos. Please contact IPS and uh, let them explain to you what you're looking at before you start uh, uh, you know, drawing conclusions if something works. So here we have our FAM11 module. This is just one of many of our palm and face recognition modules. Mentioned before, storage of 50,000 faces. It also works outdoors in very bright sunlight or in total darkness. That's another drawback. Most face recognition systems are using a, a standard visible light camera. And as the light becomes brighter or darker, you lose image quality and therefore it's less reliable. With ZK, we are using the armature modules which have an infrared camera. So total darkness, complete bright sunlight. And again, you don't need a computer or software. So that's the module. Keep your eyes on the module. And then notice how it fits into our Speedface reader. So this was an award-winning uh, reader even before COVID. 
I believe it's the world's first and still may be only standalone outdoor rated face and palm recognition reader. So now when you want to restrict access to your building and you're concerned with uh, using keys or cards that could be uh, used or forgotten or people get accidentally locked out, this is an outdoor rated IP68 IK04 vandal resistant access control device. You can wire it directly to your door lock or you can wire it to your existing access control panel um, inside your office. Again, it, it has that module in it, so it's reading up to 50,000 faces and 5,000 palms. And um, uh, it's, it's patent pending technology in 2019. It was a top 30 innovation awarded by SSI Magazine. And you can order this device with or without a temperature reader. So outdoor uh, face and palm recognition. Um, you can also have RFID and, uh, or assign a password to it for multi-factor authentication. Now we talked a little bit earlier about um, you know, why move away from cards and procs to biometrics. Well, here's an example, one of our customers, they actually purchased um, over a million dollars worth of speed face, face recognition devices, over a million dollars, because they were sick and tired of the uh, replacement costs of their prox card readers. Um, I don't know what their uh, break-even point is, but uh, certainly they thought, thought it was a worthwhile investment. They recognized that the ongoing costs of issuing cards, managing cards, replacing cards, keeping track of cards, you lose employees, you add new employees. Um, you know, there's a lot of soft costs with managing the cards in addition to the security concerns when someone unauthorized obtains a card from an authorized person. So um, using face and palm recognition can offset that cost tremendously. I'm not saying your ROI is going to be one day or one month, but certainly um, you know, uh, more secure and that break-even point you will reach that, whether it's in a year or two, depending upon how many cards you've issued. As mentioned before, um, we added a thermal imaging camera to our speed based device. So the speed based device um, has all that functionality, except when it has a, a temperature reader, it's no longer outdoor rated. So very important to note that no vendor so far has a reliable outdoor rated temperature reader. These devices are intended to be operated indoors in temperature controlled environments. So SpeedFace 8T Plus, the T stands for Thermographic Imaging Camera. This is a, a face and palm reader that can also uh, measure your body temperature as well as detect if you have a mask and then control the door accordingly based on those multiple parameters. And then we also have a smaller version of it, the 5-inch. This is a device that we actually have in all of our uh, offices here in our Atlanta office. Just a smaller form factor. Um, it can only hold 6,000 faces and 3,000 palms, but um, it's about 25% less expensive. It's a smaller form factor, so um, just another option. Um, another uh, uh, growing field we've seen is visitor management. And if you think about it, uh, you know, access control was designed, of course, to restrict access to your employees and everyone who's, on, everyone who's re registered in your system. But then what do we do about visitors? Some people just use, still use a paper log entry book for visitors. And, um, or some people um, you know, may have gone the, the electronic way. But with our check-in kiosks, we can combine face recognition, palm recognition, and QR code recognition to make absolutely sure the visitor is who they say they are. And with our check-in kiosks, we actually have made the visitor check-in process completely unattended because the device also has a, um, a, a, a thermal printer inside it. So once you've authenticated to the device, the device can then output a QR code, which can then be presented to a turnstile that has a QR code reader on it. And now you can actually allow the visitor in unattended to whatever waiting room there is um, to, to meet them. So. If you're the person who extended the invitation, you don't have to sit in the lobby waiting for your customer to show up. You can meet them comfortably uh, wherever the meeting room is. So this is our FK1013 Plus Visitor Check-In Kiosk. Not only do you have the ability now to maintain 
um, records and restrict access to your own employees, but now you have a way to keep a track of the visitors. And because we're on the subject of touchless and kind of un unattended, as I just mentioned, um, here are ZK Techo's product line of Bluetooth readers. Um, the most convenient is we have a combination mullion mount with a single gang adapter. So that, that ensures that whatever installation uh, environment you have, the ability to go from mullion to single gang is very, very convenient. And our Bluetooth readers, um, some of them have keypads and some do not. And of course, all of this technology is available through IPS. We're all trained on installing this. Now, we mentioned before mobile um, credentials, and everyone uh, on the phone or uh, we reviewed Bluetooth. How many people are aware of using QR code technology to control door access? Uh, many of us were introduced to QR codes, myself included, uh, in restaurants, because the restaurants view the importance of not having menus which have touch surfaces. So the restaurants were smart enough to recognize the need for touchless technology. Um, how about we apply this in access control? So um, anyone on the call, has anyone familiar or had experience using QR codes to access a door? I have not. It sounds, I, I not. It sounds interesting. Yeah. So here's some advantages of, of using the QR code. First and foremost, um, the QR codes are free. <laughs> now, uh, granted, you know, anyone who makes a, a living on recurring costs of customers probably is not so excited about this, and I get that. <laughs> but from an end user's perspective, the QR codes are absolutely free. Um, so when you present your phone, Instead of presenting your Bluetooth credential, and of course a Bluetooth credential costs money, and you need, you know, um, and of course if you lose your phone, in most cases you have to replace the Bluetooth credential. I'm not sure if anyone is aware of that, but that's how the Bluetooth credential manufacturers make their money. Um, every time, you know, a customer has to change their phone out, you have to purchase a new Bluetooth credential. But the QR codes are unlimited and they're free. They're also extremely secure because it's, you can't just take a, a screenshot of your QR code and pass it on to someone. Every time you use a QR code to access the door, the QR code automatically expires immediately. And then when you need to access the door again, you simply tap your finger on your phone and a new QR code is automatically generated by our, our software or, or any third-party access control software company um, that uh, can generate QR codes. So. Um, I make the argument QR codes are less expensive and more secure than a Bluetooth because potentially you could lend your phone to someone for a few moments if that person wanted to gain access to a room they're not normally authorized to do so. Um, it can happen. But with the QR code, you don't have to worry even about sharing phones. So we've got QR code readers with and without uh, keypads, outdoor rated. And again, these are all available from IPS. Now, here's a new introduction, which is extremely timely. Um, I don't know anyone who's not feeling the pain of HID's global supply chain shortage. Um, any, anyone on the call? Can anyone speak to a uh, difficulty obtaining HID readers? Hey, Larry, it's Tim McHugh. Yeah, we're, we're feeling the pinch of that um, uh, right now. So uh, yeah. anxious to hear what you have to say. Yeah, you know, th this was really, really timely because, uh, um, you know, and I, I don't mean to pick on HID. I'm only picking on them because, as we all know, they are the largest RFID provider um, in the United States, in Canada. And when the largest provider has difficulty uh, supplying their customers, that's a problem. So we now have a new line of uh, Armature. You, you may have seen me reference that before with our biometric modules. The um, Armature line also includes multi-frequency readers that can support HID procs, that can support um, HID I-Class and COs, um, in addition to many other type uh, uh, credentials. It supports um, near-field communication. It supports Bluetooth. So this is our new series, our EP series of multi-frequency readers, and um, very secure. They all support OSDP as well. So 
Um, there's a lot of information on these readers. I'm going to throw it on the screen just so that you can um, see. Um, it's very, very detailed. Um, and we can always provide you a data sheet afterwards. But these readers can support over 100 different types of RFID um, signals. You can see here that it reads 125 kilohertz, 13.56 megahertz, um, 2.4 gigahertz. Um, the only drawback currently is that we can only read um, smart card um, serial number. So right now we're not reading a secure sector, even though um, you know we're currently testing it, and we may actually be able to do that. But at least right now we can um, you know um, read the card number regardless of what uh, frequency it's running on. Okay, so these cards are absolutely these readers are absolutely um, essential in today's times when HID is uh, uh, failing to deliver. And we're hoping that uh, uh, selfishly that ZK Techo can capitalize on this um, um, in the next uh, six months to a year, um, assuming it eventually HID uh, fixes their house. Um, I mentioned before um, the readers are available in um, multi frequency. They also are available in a dual mount configuration where you can purchase um, a, the device that has a mullion size, but it also snaps into a single gang mount. So it uh, makes it very, very flexible with regards to mounting. All right, so those are some of the uh, touchless RFID solutions. Um, I'm not sure if anybody has a, a retail background, but I just want to touch upon some of the technology that's used in retail um, because it does involve touchless technology. Um, currently, um, we're working with Home Depot and all their distribution centers because, um, you know, in the news, even though COVID was, um, you know, grabbing all the headlines, and now, sadly, um, the people in Ukraine are occupying those headlines. But prior to that, if you recall, um, there were a lot of uh, headlines about shootings in schools and even in retail establishments. So Home Depot was concerned with that, and now they're, uh, they're implementing measures to address workplace violence and also theft um, with touchless technology. I'm going to jump into briefly. Um, I also mentioned palm recognition. So palm recognition is now being used with various different um, access control devices such as gates, and in a cashierless environment, you can actually reduce the number of uh, cashiers or employees in retail stores. Um, sadly, whenever I go to any of these retail um, store technology shows, I ask them, what's your number one priority? And they said, uh, sadly, anything that lessens the amount of uh, employees that we need, because payroll is uh, a large chunk of anyone's operating budget. So biometrics in combination with access control technology, it can lessen the need for cashiers. Likewise, um, the technology I'm going to show you with our Kronos access control system, which is a turnstile metal detector, also uh, lessens the need for security guards, which can also um, be expensive. So um, these are just a few statistics, just if anyone is running retail to see that um, inventory shrink when either um, employees are stealing, unfortunately, or shoplifters. Um, it, it's a huge cost, and that's why you now can consider using touchless um, gate entry as a way to uh, eliminate uh, need for cashiers when you use with a, a payment system. And then uh, there was workplace violence statistics. You can see the growth in that over the years. Again, it's not making headlines, but certainly it's out there. And I mentioned um, uh, Home Depot is using this in their uh, distribution centers to help prevent people from stealing. So this is not necessarily um, you know, um, ideal for uh, commercial offices, but just to want to give you an idea of where some of this technology is prevalent. Here you can see um, Home Depot. Um, I don't put that in writing, but uh, we all know Home Depot. You may not know that they're over $100 billion a year um, in sales. They have over 150 distribution centers, but here they're combining our, tur our Kronos turnstile with x-ray scanners. And it's a phenomenal deterrence for anyone walking in knowing that Home Depot takes security serious. And if you do try to bring in any type of dangerous weapons, you will be caught at the perimeter. So why even try? It also is a nice deterrence for employees knowing that upon exiting uh, work, if they try to take anything, um, it will be picked up at here at this point also. So unfortunately, this is coming more and more, uh, more, and more common. So we have the Kronos here. Um, we displayed this at our ICY security show last year. This is the world's first and only turnstile with an integrated metal detector. And the reason why that's really um, important 
is because most metal detectors will just beep if there's metal on your person. We've all gone through them at airports and at sports stadiums, but the, the chronos will actually remain locked until the person properly authenticates themselves and is detected not having metal. So you could potentially have an unattended um, entry control system here and much smaller foot space just having one unit instead of two. So again, this is entirely touchless and you don't have to have a security guard necessarily programming each one. Um, I'm going to go through uh, these next few slides very quickly. I just want to impress upon everybody that we really wanted to automate these systems to make them simple. And so just like a microwave has pre-settings for uh, popcorn or defrost, uh, I believe we're the only turnstile in the world that's got 10 modes of operation where you can make it very simple for people to pass in and out by having no security, just having the deterrence and the flaps remain open. Or the flaps can close, and the moment it recognizes anybody through its motion sensor, it will open up. Or maybe it will only open up if the person um, is authenticated, and we don't care if they have metal going in, but upon metal coming out, it will lock down. So you've got all these settings on egress and ingress, depending upon if you want to make it a very convenient experience for your customers or you want to make it very, very secure. Are you more concerned with people entering or are you more concerned with people exiting? So these are all presets um, in the Chronos in the turnstile, which makes it very, very simple uh, to operate. So we're almost at the conclusion. I just wanted to give you guys some uh, food for thought, but uh, here's a two minute video we put on our YouTube channel. And this combines visitor management with access control, with health check screening. It's a two minute video. Again, please do visit our, our website. But it basically walks somebody through our process. You send an invitation to someone's phone, and then they receive the QR code on their phone. And then they approach the kiosk. You can authenticate your appointment with QR code. Additionally, do a face scan to ensure that you are the person who you see you are. The kiosk will notify your host that you've arrived. But meanwhile, when you're at the kiosk, it will produce a QR code, which you can then bring to the turnstile, and then the turnstile can open. So that's our safe to create entirely unattended uh, entry control. And we say safe to create because it ensures the visitors have authenticated who they are. They've proven their appointment through their QR code, and they can additionally go through a health check questionnaire in addition to a temperature scan and a, even a body temperature, um, sorry, body temperature scan and mass detection scan. So um, um, that pretty much concludes the presentation. I know we're almost on the one hour mark. Uh, I hope you found it relevant. Um, are there any questions I can address for anyone? Folks, feel free to hop on your mic or if you're on the phone, ask, um, or if you need to drop it into the chat, um, you can do that as well. And I'll keep an eye on that here for the next minute or two. And then just as a reminder for all of our customer attendees, I will be following up Via email, I'll include a link to the um, recording of the presentation in case you want to go back and review anything or forward it on to a colleague. Um, and I will also um, include some additional information from ZT ZK Tech. Oh, I have so much trouble saying that today. And um, I will also work with you to get you your gift card for joining us. Oh, we do have a question in the chat. Um, question, what are some of the limitations of palm recognition? For example, what if an employee injures their hand? Do you have to enroll on the reader or is there a an enrollment device? Yeah, that, that's a great question. And again, the, 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 the beauty behind the palm recognition is that it's usually infrared technology, which is, is actually going beneath the skin surface and looking at your vein pattern. And it's very unlikely that vein pattern will be disrupted by any type of injury. Uh, we all have a very unique vein pattern. Um, but with that said, um, um, I always recommend at least having a, a fallback uh, credential. So even with palm recognition, you might still want to um, you know, issue everybody uh, you know, the face recognition, or maybe you still want to offer them uh, a key code just as a backup as an, or as an override, because it's always possible 
Um, you know, you might have a failure with any one particular credential you have. But for the most part, palm recognition is using infrared, looking at your vein pattern, and you know, there's really very, very uh, few things that can go wrong with that. Um, also, it's important to note, these devices are entirely standalone, but you do want to put them on a network when you have multiple devices and utilize our software to manage those templates. Um, so you could enroll on one of the devices and then uh, distribute that template um, all throughout the other devices. And to answer your questions, yes, we have a POM enrollment reader, which is less expensive than a standalone reader. Um, it's about the size of a keyboard mouse. You just plug it in via USB. You can enroll everybody in one central location, and then the software pushes out those POM templates to all the readers on the network. Awesome. Are there any further questions? I don't see anything. Um, so if there are no additional questions, that concludes our presentation today. And again, just remember attendees, I will be following up with everyone um, to get you all the materials as well as work out the details on your gift card. So thank you for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, Taylor. Have a thank good you, day, Larry. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody.